It was All Hallows' Eve, 1715, the time when guests come out to play. John Jack Brunn for Gilmerton mad his merry way down Ellen's Grove to the horseshoe-shaped hamlet built around an all at the bend of with the bardy burn. That eldritch nicht, Stinnis folk, had been apple bobbin with the bairns guising in the monk's orchard and carrying jack-o'-lanterns. John was musing at the tumpsy trins gowking out for the cottage windocks, garden hames for darkling forces. Well, there had I been strange tales o' hauntings, for ye ken there was there was nae cuck in the hamlet. But John the Carter, he was he was never feared or next of in the fairy queen or or any unchancy thing for that matter. No. He wasn't a an old Dean man, but he wasn't cut good, ye ken. And well he wasn't the of them that would frown on frown on the you know, the old green ways. But John Jack near gied ony heed to bogles, for according to him, he was nae witless loon. E'en though we all ken that the trees talk in Ellen's Glen. Well, he was playing his woodpipe on that road that led to Eildon Hill, where Thomas the Rhymer met the Fairy Queen and followed her to Cat Catter Hall. Well, this nicht, I was heading down that way myself, for a wee dram at the robin's nest. And there was John at the Stain Brig. He was staring into the river as if he were a living sinner. He was forlorn. He was tacking a moment Taking a moment to remember his beloved good wife Mag, sadly long since passed away. The brig you can it was it was the lover's brig, but Petrarch there cry at Jack's burn, for twa rivers meet on a merry meet and merry together on yin spot. That's where the hand fasting takes place. On this nacht he, he wished to be with his mag again, for he was guy weary of walking down the steep incline of life alone without her. In his mind he, he could see mag on a cart on that day, all bedecked with flowers, bells jing jingling, the young bucks all got up in their mole skin and their Lincoln green coats as if they were as if they were Robin Hood's merry men themselves. But Big Mag on her big day, she hi had eyes for yin. Care to John Jack Brun fi Gilmerton. Standing up for her, fi fulo falorum and strutting around in his bras as if he were the cock of the country old Midlothian adjusting his garments as if he were a laird. That day he merit his beloved Mag, and she near wanted for anything, for he wasna yin to carry a hint no hon that near will. <sighs> but things were passing queer like when suddenly afflicted he standing on the brig he cried out, as if he were, as if we were on the eve of eternity itself. By my soul, I thought he would loup right into the burn, as if dragged by some uncle invisible force. Well, well, I ran as if I were a young buck running in the Gilmerton foot race. And what do you think I saw? Aye, I saw it was a green hand. Hodding on 
to his shirt coat. Oh, it puts shivers up you. I grabbed a hand of his as if I was a wrestler and pooed and pooed so hard that we both fled back onto each other. Jeez. And my heart about leaped out of my chest with the exertion. Wet with a hand and him landing on top of me. Get off of me, get off of me, I cried. It was fierce, sir. Here we go, Leary, you saw it, man. You saw the hand, you saw it. He cried. Aye, I did. And he do about that. God save us, I said. But what in the name of God can it mean, Tommy Troop? Said uh, John Jack, shaking in his clogs. Well, I didn't can, I said. Fashion myself. Money's the tail I heard tell o' the, o the green horn in these pairs, but never in my long lead did I thaw to see it myself. <sighs> By my soul I thought I was a goner, he said, panting like an old horse. Aye, 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 you maun need a dram o' the water of life to strengthen that inner man ye. Hod on to me, good man, and we'll up a wa to the nest. Say, John Jack, leaning on me with a shock of awe, his shanks shaking, we made our way up the steep brae to the inn. Stumbling into the bar parlour, where old patriarch Manny McSnout was watching us with his young, good, suspicious e. Why, he could sniff out a bit of strife better than a bloodhound on a fox. <clears throat> you look it as if you've seen a ghost, good man. You're as white as a corpse, he said. Ignore him, ignoring him, we put three drams down our thrapples faster than a mill wheel. Folk were curious, for we were no yin of them that would drink the stennis burn dry, it, not normally anyways. Come awa and take a seat here, lads. We look round. A wheel dressed stranger, dressed in scarlet. And at his bidding, we made our way to the ingle nuke. Nobody and his father began to glower at us and gather about us, for their lugs and their nebs were bothering them. A wan gear a man peace, said the big swarthy stranger man, shooting them awa as if they were flies on kudung. John Jack telt the mysterious stranger that he'd seen the green horn and how it often appeared with the white phantom. He was feared, feared that the hand would pull him richt into the other world. Then he began spearing about my cell, running to save him like some half-mad, crazy-looking chill. Them were, who were pretending to mind their own business, cheered as if I were William Wallace himself. Give us your favourite tune, the king will come again, quoth the stranger to John, as if he was real Ken Speckled. John took a gulp with the mountain dew. Then suddenly his neb began to run, run as if it were a waterfall. Then the sweat started pouring out of his oxters. McSnoot, seizing his opportunity, made his move. For he wanted to inveigle himself. He took out his tortoise oil, tortoise shell snuff box and passed it to John. You'll take a wee snuff, said Manny, giving him the nod. Thank you very much, Manny, quoth he, clearing his nostrils. <clears throat> Richt, where was I? Ah, you saw the lady on her white horse, 
said money interfering. Hedge of horses, no, no, only, only the green horn. Was it, was it holding a sword? Was it maybe he's holding a wand or wearing a ring? Asked the scarlet gentleman. No, 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 Nathan, Nathan at all. But what can it mean? Thought John Jack out loud. A door, a door will open for you, said the gentleman as John began to glower. He began to glower at something that nobody else could see. It's a hand there. Can you no see it? It's the hand. And the white mare, whispered John. And he was smiling as if the door to heaven had been flung open to him. Just then, his een doused the glim, and that was the last mortal word we got for him. We'll be sat staring at him, got like looking at him. He looked like a young buck again. There he was, sitting with a drum in his hand, and the other reaching out for some invisible thing. For sure he took a dram with him to the other world, where Mag mon be waiting for him, said Manny, for he weel was dead. Weel, turning to get a word for the braw stranger man, he had vanished into thin air again. We look it for him, but no sign. I was dumbfoundered. So I picked up John's wood pipe for his deed horns and played the tune. The king will come again as I shall play it again now, good man.